our race leaders at this point. You've got Lando Norris holding on from Lewis Hamilton. Really, really impressive from both of them. Going at it really uh, hard out front. They were 40 seconds clear of third place. They were in a league of their own in, in the Grand Prix. And Norris is looking for his first race win. So, huge pressure moments for, uh, for both McLaren and Norris, Mercedes and Hamilton to try and cool this one. Hamilton's right there. Norris has gone off track a couple of times, but not really lost out with it. He's pushing the absolute limit to keep Hamilton, who we all know is a bit of a rain maestro, he's keeping him behind. The tricky thing then is when to pit. Now, next up we see Hamilton takes the plunge, lap 49 here. So this is the one that ends up winning him the race. And uh, Norris doesn't pit. He goes on and uh, Lando pits eventually lap 51. So he pits two laps later than Hamilton and it's a disaster. He's, he's caught the rain and he's out. It's full wet, boys. I, I got a box. I'm going to shut. Yep, we're going to come in. I can't time. do this. We're going to come in. We're going to box. So how does this happen from a driver's point of view? Let's go on board with Lando and see what's unfolding here. So this is going to be Lewis Hamilton's in-lap now. He's still right behind us. We're on board with, uh, with Lando. You can see there's uh, some markers saying it's, it's wet out there, drizzles coming down, but Lando is still going quickly through turn three. He's still got Hamilton just behind him and the slick tires are not too bad through this section, through turn four. And again, he's okay on the apex, running up to uh, turn five. And this is where it gets a bit more slippery. Back marking cars ahead. And now you can see he's scrabbling around a little bit more for grip. And this was the, the area that the rain was coming through first. And if we run it through, you can see this point here, again, very twitchy for Norris. He'd gone off there actually the lap before. This part, all quite slippery, but it's not disastrous. And then you get out of turn 10 and it's actually pretty dry at this point for the rest of the lap. So Norris is there and he's thinking, actually the slick tires are better. Remember, if you take a pit stop for intermediate tires, you've got to gain 24 seconds before the end of the race to make that worthwhile. And from that lap where Norris was driving, he wasn't 24 seconds slower. In fact, Valtteri Bottas at that point was out on track. He was three seconds quicker than Lando Norris on intermediate tires. So for two laps, Bottas was three seconds quicker and then two seconds quicker than Norris. It simply wasn't worth taking the plunge for intermediates because they weren't quick enough with the, uh, the low amount of remaining laps. Now the difference comes because Mercedes have seen the forecast is worsening. They can see Bottas's pace. They can see intermediate tires, are, they are quicker but it's not by necessarily enough at this stage, but they can see the forecast is worsening. And of course, that means that it's gonna go more towards the intermediates and more away from the slicks. So they call at the end of lap 48, Hamilton into the pits, the same lap as the Verstappen uh, science Ricardo lot came into the pits. Now that was when Mercedes wanted to pit Hamilton, the lap after Valtteri Bottas, but Lewis in the cockpit, same thoughts as, as Lando, they're driving around and they're thinking it's not that bad on slicks, we can carry on and it's not worth taking the 24 second hit for a penalty. So Lewis ignores them the first time, but then the next time Mercedes are, are pretty adamant and they say, no, seriously, this is the cutoff. You need to come in and uh, is, the rain's gonna get worse. Crucially, Norris is not getting this same chatter over the radio from McLaren. The, the radio chatter for McLaren is more asking Lando what the conditions are. Do you think you can make it on slicks? It looks pretty slippery out there. And it's more discussion rather than an absolute pit this lap. This is what you need to do because the rain's coming in worse. Lando, what do you think about it Inter? What do you think about it in Inter? No! So if Norris tries to hang this out, he's going to be in trouble. I don't think McLaren thought the rain was going to come in as badly as it did, but they, they weren't very punchy on the radio. So when Lando's driving there, He's only got to feel what he can see. And what he can see is actually the track's not that bad in the moment. He doesn't know if the rain's going to get worse. He doesn't know who's on, on inters and how quickly they're going. He doesn't know where the gaps behind him are. This is stuff the pit will all see. So they've really got to take charge, particularly if there's more rain on the horizon, which there was. So now we go back on board with, uh, with Lando and Lewis is in the pits. So now he's a bit stuck. Hamilton's pitted and immediately the intermediate tyres, they are quicker. We know that from Bottas's laps already. And um, that means that if, if Norris now pits the next lap, then he's gonna come out behind, he's gonna finish second. In hindsight, not a disaster, but he's here for the win. So now we're looking through turns, uh, turn five. Look how slippery now it's getting. It's getting pretty edgy here. And in fact, Nikita Mazepin is gonna unlap himself. 
and uh, that's how treacherous it's getting. And by this time, Norris is, is pretty stuck. If he pits, he's in second. If he tries to hang it out, there's a chance that he can win. Or remember, a safety car, if someone puts it in the wall, he's still in the race lead, and someone could easily have put it in the wall in this race, um, given the conditions and how hard they were, and many people went off, but no one brought out a, uh, a safety car by, by having a proper crash. So now we get through to the end of that lap, and now McLaren have got a choice whether they pit Norris into a guaranteed second place because Hamilton on that outlap is way quicker than him on the Inters, or if it's just a bit of a Hail Mary at this point, just see what happens and, and go for it. And they choose the second option. Lando once again doesn't pit in. Now, if he pitted here, he finishes second, but McLaren were punchy. They've led this race for such a long time, they wanna, wanna win it. But right now is the moment that I think they realize they're stuffed and uh, Norris has got no grip on the slicks. You can see Giovinazzi's trying to unlap himself in the Alfa Romeo, thinks better of it, but he's gonna come through in a minute because Lando now has just got no grip. This little bit of uh, rain has got heavier and in the last 40 seconds or so, it's made it absolutely undrivable suddenly. And sadly, Norris has just gone past the pit entry. If he realized this, it was this slippery around the whole lap a few corners ago before he'd crossed the, uh, the pit entry, I'm sure he would have come in and just taken second because by now, this is just an absolute uh, write-off for Norris. Coming through turn three, super, super slow, no grip at all, the wall right on the outside, into four, and now you're just an absolute passenger on the slicks. And he's gonna go up in the next corner, spin, lose the lead, and uh, actually had such a big margin that he could have this atrocious in-lap, super slow, and still finish in seventh place, which is testament to the rest of his race. But basically, what on earth is he doing on slicks at this moment? And it's, uh, it comes down to a really tricky decision. McLaren didn't see the rain coming as, as badly as it has, and they certainly didn't radio Norris to tell him. So they had to do that. Now, most of the Formula One teams have the same weather system, pretty much, but McLaren have not interpreted it quite the same way as, as Mercedes have, and Mercedes saw the rain getting heavier. They also had an easier chance to pit, because they were already in second place. So if Hamilton pits from second, worst case, it's not quite the right call and he'll finish second. They had a free pit stop back there. Whereas if Norris pits from first and it's not the right call, he's gonna finish second and that wouldn't look so great. So Mercedes had an easier job, but crucially they gave Lewis Hamilton the, uh, the information that he needed and that's how it worked. This is the telemetry then, which quite clearly shows the moment where it, it all goes wrong for, uh, for Norris. This is Valtteri Bottas in the red. Then you've got basically every lap of Lando before he comes into the pits in, uh, in orange, yellow, green, and then finally blue. And here you can see pretty much how the race was, was done. So we look at turn two and you can see for all these laps, actually Bottas on his inters, he's, he's marginally quicker on the way in. He's, uh, his minimum speed is slightly higher, but there's a really limited gain through this part of the circuit. It's this middle part that's, uh, that suddenly becomes a much bigger gain where it's, where it's wetter, even from early on. This is where Bottas, when he first put on the Inters, was gaining. But then we look at turn four, and now you can see here again, Bottas on the intermediates in the red, he's slightly quicker at the minimum speed down here, but it's not by a huge amount. And you remember, he's got to make 24 seconds up. So he's got to be making up um, a good chunk every lap, and that's not massive for Bottas. But where it now picks up is this middle sector. So you've got, turns five, turn seven, turn nine, and 10. Now these are all in the middle sector here. This is where it's slippery. And you can see there's big chunks now that uh, Bottas is taking out, particularly in this corner here and these ones. The minimum speeds there is huge. And this is where the intermediates are gaining. But again, over the whole lap, there's big chunks, but is it enough to make up your 24 seconds? At this point, it's not quite enough still. And then you get to the final sector once again, and through here, the, the sort of colors are all fairly well merged. Again, the red's slightly quicker through, but there's not a massive difference, basically. So it's all quite close. And then suddenly you get the, the terrible moment for Lando Norris, which comes down here, just at the green. This is where he's missing the pits for the second time after, uh, after Hamilton's pitted in the green, comes through the final corners, and suddenly, He's got no grip at all, he's slithering around. And the green then, we come through a lap, becomes the blue, and this is a catastrophe. This is where Norris throws away not only the win, 
but second place as well, because quite frankly, the blue lap is just about getting back to the pits there on. And you can see the spin that he has down here. Look how slow he's coming into that corner, but still he's, uh, he's ending up spinning around from a pitiful straight line speed coming in because he's on slicks in a pretty wet track. So he did well to even get it back to the pit lane in the end, but that was, uh, that was the call that the, the team really had to make. And uh, on this occasion, I don't think Lando in the cockpit had enough information. He was quite sharp with his engineer on the radio, told him to shut up when, uh, when he was talking too much. And of course, this is the heightened situation that you're doing. You're, you're fighting for your first win. You've got Lewis Hamilton just behind you. Slicks in a, in a track that's getting more and more slippery is the worst situation you could possibly have. It's way easier to go the other way around when it's wetter and, and drying, because then you can just find a little bit more grip all the time. Taking away a bit of grip all the time is really tricky. So Lando was pretty sharp with his, with his engineer, but what you need here is concise, accurate information. Hamilton had it, even if he didn't agree with the call, the information was good enough that he pitted. Norris fundamentally didn't have it, didn't pit, lost the race. So that was a look at the high pressure pit stop permutations for Norris and Hamilton fighting it out for the win. But there were plenty of other strategy implications around the whole rest of the field as well and loads of other drama from the start to the finish. So check it out on F1 TV.